presented by Phoenix Rising. Wheeler Professional Digital Trigger Gauge Testing and Review. Phoenix Rising here, and today we're going to be doing a quick review and uh, talk about the use and function of the Wheeler Professional Digital Trigger Gauge. Introduction. Why buy the Wheeler? Okay, so why might you be interested in this digital trigger pull gauge? Uh, first off, if you're looking at this, obviously you are interested, and you've probably looked at some of the very cheap uh, spring tension type of devices out there that uh, that you can have for about twenty dollars. Why pay Why pay more than twice that for this at about fifty dollars? Uh, well, there's actually several good reasons. Uh, first off, this is going to be a little bit more accurate. According to Wheeler, this is guaranteed with uh, an accuracy of half a percent and it's 0 to 12 pounds of trigger pull is what it's rated for. So you might not, uh, a double action revolver, you might just use single action and I don't think you're going to quantify that unless it's a very light trigger. But uh, it does that. It also calculates max, min, and average of multiple trigger pulls. And that's a big advantage because the reality of it is is if you're going to use this gauge, what you're going to find is it's going to come up with a variety of numbers. It's not going to be entirely consistent, and a significant portion of that is going to be because of all the variables involved. And we'll talk about those and demonstrate use of this device in a little bit. So it does an average, and that's a good thing. Uh, it's also fairly flexible. You do have to extend the arm all the way out, but it does pivot, so you can accommodate different trigger pulls. comes with a handy case to protect it. It also comes with a little adapter for a wider trigger to give you a little bit of flexibility in mounting there. So that's what this device does. Uh, as to why you need it, to be honest, I think most people really don't need a trigger pull gauge. It's a nicety. It's something that's, uh, you know, if you have a, if you have a firearm, and that you don't know and you don't like the trigger on it, you can quantify it using this and say, okay, this has uh, X amount of pull. Uh, you can watch on the scale the grittiness as you're pulling it back where it may come up and down a little bit before you finally get to the break point on the trigger. Uh, you can also, if you're going to try and hone a trigger or maybe dress it up a little bit, you can do a before and after with it. And if you buy that new spanky fantastic gizmo trigger uh, for an AR or for whatever, or get a trigger job done, you can quantify it after, before and after with it, okay? So that's what this is for. Uh, let's go ahead and we'll get into some of the specs on it and using it and what's included. Features and functions of the Wheeler. Okay, so let's go over the function of the Wheeler Digital Professional Digital trigger gauge. Uh, okay, so first off, unit construction seems fairly well built, but it doesn't feel overly robust. Uh, I don't like the texture of the plastic, but that's just me being a geek, I guess. Uh, you, build quality's not bad, okay? It's powered by two, uh, two AA batteries, and uh, it does tell you uh, how to use it on the back of real quick... Uh, real quick little instruction thing so you don't really need the instruction sheet per se tells you 12 pound maximum pull on this thing so uh, how do you use this first off let's talk about the arm and positions and something that when you look at it online I know I wasn't fully aware of it uh, until actually I got the unit and started playing with it which is uh, something that's really cool that you may not be aware of first off you know they show it online and, and this arm swings out it kinda clicks into a detent so that makes you think that it's used just like a mechanical spring style trigger gauge uh, you can also pivot this 90 degrees so again oh there's some flexibility there but it makes you think that in order to use this you're going to have to hook it on your trigger hold the unit and pull to, to measure strain right until plink there you go that's not the case at all actually you can use it with the arm partially uh, down now I will say this you can't rotate this 90 degrees it will not go unless you are 
uh, all the way in the extended and locked position. Okay, so I wish it did kind of articulate a little bit better that way. That'd give it a lot more flexibility. So that's one little pointer for Wheeler. Hey, make it to where this thing could rotate 90 degrees other than just in the locked position. But the big point is, is your strain gauge is not built into the body of the device. Where you have a spring tension type of setup, what's going to happen is you've got a spring uh, that's calibrated or relatively calibrated spring. So as you pull, spring compresses and then you look and see how far it slid the pointer. So it has to function that way. Because this is a digital device and it has a strain gauge built in, that gauge happens to be built right into the tip here. And that's absolutely wonderful, okay? Uh, kudos to Wheeler. That's, I, I didn't realize it when I bought it, and I thought, man, you know, this is first, I was trying to use it just like I would an old mechanical gauge. But the reality is your sensors, all, built, all, the, all the working part to measure is built right into this tip. So let's talk about that a little bit. What that means is because it's in, in there, instead of having, you can pull a unit like you would a regular conventional old mechanical strain gauge, but if I place this thing and just position it with in front of my trigger, I can use my trigger finger and pull, and because it's going to compress between those two things, I'm going to get a reading, okay? So instead of having to awkwardly hold this thing and get it positioned right and do all this mess, I can get it propped up or hold it with one hand, put the gun in a rest, and use my finger and pull it just like I were pulling the trigger, albeit a big fat one up here, and it's going to record, okay? How wonderful is that? Uh, so if you weren't, that, that alone, if I'd have known that, I wouldn't have pondered whether I should get a mechanical or a digital one because that's just light years better, okay? Literally. So enough about that. Uh, while we're talking about the head here, you'll notice this kind of has a fairly narrow, aggressively angled groove, which I thought, well, that's a little awkward, maybe won't be that great for consistency on a lot of triggers. But they also give you this nice little rubbery vinyl or plastic rubber, whatever you want to call it, uh, PVC or something, covering that goes over top of your strain gauge. It gives it a more uh, less rounded profile, a little bit of grippiness to it. I kind of like that, but I will say I wouldn't store it with this on the tip. They give you a little hole in the foam in your case to store it, because when you're storing this, I'm not so sure if I have this rubber tip on if it would be compressing the strain gauge at all in storage. So I, I probably would leave this off when I'm storing the device. I don't. That may not be true, but I wouldn't want to take a chance on keeping that compressed to where it might affect accuracy just because it's been stored for a long time. So a little pointer about that. So we'll go ahead and slip this back on here and let's power this thing up and walk through it. Power button's in the center. Quick press on, quick press off. Uh, Wheeler, if you're watching this, uh, <clears throat> One thing I would say is aside from the articulating, allow this to articulate all the way down to the side as well would be beneficial for different positions and uses. Hey, it's okay to power it on uh, with just a quick press, but let's make it a press and hold to power this thing off because if I'm in the middle of something and I accidentally slip and power it off, I just lost all my readings. Okay, maybe if you press and hold it, it would be more deliberate, but... Uh, but you don't have to. Okay, that would be a change I would recommend for this unit. Minor aggravation, as long as you pay attention to what you're doing, that shouldn't be an issue. So we have the unit powered on, and right now it happens to be in pounds and ounces, peak mode with an average displayed. Now, uh, units are pounds and ounces, press the units button, and you can change that to kilograms if you're more metric oriented, so it works uh, all over the world. Uh, so units, and I'm going to put that back to my preferred me measurement, which is pounds and ounces. Mode button. You have three different modes on this, or they say two modes, but it's actually right two modes with two different ways to display one of them. So uh, we're in peak mode, which is a mode most people are going to find of the most value. If I press the mode button again, it cycles to peak mode with a, a maximum and a minimum, where before we just had average. I guess I should have mentioned that, right? And then lastly, we have a live mode. So let's cycle back through. So peak mode showing an average of all your saved readings. Peak mode showing the minimum and maximum saved readings. And lastly, live mode. Now live mode is going to be handy if you have a gritty trigger. You know, let's, uh, I don't know what type of trigger might be gritty. I don't know, stock factory AR, military grade. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't know, something like that. If you have a trigger that's a little bit gritty, 
in live mode, you're not going to be able to record anything, but as you can see, it's a dynamic number that's changing as I am manipulating this, if I can keep the display where it's clear to the camera. So if you're doing, if you're bouncing up and down a little bit as you're pulling it, you're going to be able to kind of see and quantify that a little bit when you're in live mode. So if you do that and then you want to try polishing parts and uh, or getting a trigger job done on something because it's gritty, hey, you can kind of look at that, get a feel for where that's at beforehand, how much, how bad is it, and, and do a before and after kind of gig. So there's where your live value is going to come in kind of handy. Or to really, not that you can't feel it with a trained finger anyway, but you could actually maybe see if you've got a gritty trigger there where it's kind of creeping back and forth as you're coming up. So enough of live mode. Now let's go to the one that everybody wants, which is your peak mode and your ability to do averages and mins and max. So here's how you're going to use this thing. We're in peak mode, so as I put a little bit of force on there, right, if I can get this thing to where it keeps readable, uh, I've got three and a half ounces, I press it a little harder, two pounds, 15 ounces, and it's going to retain the highest value it sees, okay? So let's get this up into a five pound range or so, 14, 13, okay, we're six pounds. We're at six pounds, 2.3 ounces. So I got, a, I got a reading, I want to save it. All I have to do is press the enter key just once, okay? Press it once because every time you press the enter key, it saves a reading and it also clears your display. So press once, I've now got one saved reading. I don't know if you can make that out there. One saved reading and my average is six, point, uh, six pounds, 2.3 ounces, which is the reading I just had. So let's go ahead and get a couple more readings in here. 4 pounds, 11 ounces. Yeah, we'll save that. Okay, now I've got two readings. My average is 5.68. If I switch modes, I show both those readings, min, max. Let's go back to peak mode again. I'm going to put a few readings in here. 7 pounds, 3, save it. Let's do a, a bit of a low one here. If I can. Okay, 4 pounds, 14, save it again. So now my average is 5 pounds, 11.7 ounces. And my highest was 7.3, my lowest was 4, or 7, 7 pounds, 3 ounces, lowest was 4 pounds, 11 ounces. Now, uh, one other thing I want to mention here is that there's no way for me to go through these readings and scroll back through each of my readings uh, to look at them once I save them, okay? It'll just show me the average, the minimum, and the maximum. So... If you want to do something where you want to have a spreadsheet or some other uh, methodology where you actually want to record each of the trigger pulls, because you know you, again you could have one a, a couple that are really high and the rest all nominal, uh, you might actually want to look at those numbers and throw out the, a couple of off ones after the fact. Uh, this thing won't let you do that. You'll have to do that in a spreadsheet and take your own record each of your peaks separately on a sheet of paper or something. So. What it will let you do though, is if you boof up while you're in the process, let's go ahead and just really, okay, we're at nine pounds, 12 ounces. I say, holy crap, I don't know what I did, but I know that's not good. Now I've got four and I wanted to get a run of six readings or something. If you press the delete key just momentarily, it clears your peak, but it doesn't clear everything else out. And again, that's a momentary press. So if you have a boofed reading before you hit enter, hit the delete, redo it. Uh, which is nice. Now, once you're done with this whole process and you want to clear out this memory, and uh, again, there's a uh, hot min max, let's go back, there's our average, five pounds, 11 ounces. Once you want to clear out your memory, there's two ways you can do it. You can either hit the power button and power the unit off and it loses all the saved memory, uh, or you can press and hold the delete button and that will also clear your memory. So uh, two ways to clear the uh, delete, and by the way, this counter goes up to 99, so if you really want to do an average of 99 trigger pulls, have at it. I don't believe that would be necessary, but it does have the capability to do such. So there you have it. Press the power button to turn the unit off. Again, I would store it without this extra cap on it. And there you go, use and function of the Wheeler Professional Digital Trigger Pull Gauge. So uh, stick with us. We're going to pull a lower out, put it in a stand, and kind of do some just uh, do some testing there uh, in use. And we'll talk about a few things that you may want to just think about uh, as you're using this.
the wheeler in use. Okay, so here we have a standard AR-15 platform type of rifle um, sitting in a shooting rest. I don't have it tied down or anything because we're going to be flipping it around and moving it as we do this little presentation. But uh, this has a standard stock mil spec type of trigger in it. Definitely not the best triggers in the world. They work okay, but they're pretty gritty. And uh, if you ever had something a little better, then you'll understand why for sure. So let's go ahead and talk about this first in things that are going to impact your readings, okay? Because I think that's something that just food for thought as you're using this device. Uh, if you don't use it properly or you're not consistent, you're not going to get consistent or accurate results. So the first thing I'm going to talk about will affect any trigger pull gauge, no matter what brand, whatever the hell you're using, it's going to affect it. And that is the fact that you have to be centered where your finger, finger rests, and this rifle's locked open, the action, and it is cleared, by the way. Uh, but wherever you rest your finger when you naturally go to pull it, that is where you have to place your sensor. That is, you have to use that as your pull point. If you pull closer to the pivot pin that the trigger rotates on, it's going to take more force to move the trigger, so you're not going to get an accurate reading. By the same token, if you put it way out here at the tip, uh, that is going to decrease the force required, and again, you're not going to get an accurate reading. And if you don't put it in the same place every time you do the test, you're going to be all over the board, uh, not counting any mechanical differences in your trigger setup. Okay, So placement vertically is critical on this device and on your regular spring tension type of strain gauges. So let's go ahead and talk about another thing that matters depending on how you use this device. Now, uh, like we talked about the sensors in the head, so you can either squeeze the top of the sensor with this, this resting on your trigger to, to work it, or you can pull the whole device like you would a spring tension meter. So another thing that's going to impact it, we talked about the vertical alignment, but your horizontal alignment too, if I'm angled down, I'm going to slip and change the point that I'm going to rotate. If I'm angled up, same thing, it's going to, it's going to impact the, ro the rotation. Now, another thing is I want to be parallel with the barrel. If I'm angled out like this, then any, any slot that's in the whole mechanism is going to cause it to bind more. And again, it's going to throw the results off. Anybody that's a mechanic out there who's ever had to torque bolts and use extensions or 90 degree offsets or all this weird stuff, the math gets fairly complex because everything impacts the amount of torque to torque a bolt. Uh, we're doing the same thing here. We're doing an offset. We're not doing a straight torque working it like this. We're doing an offset and anything we change is going to impact that reading. So just keep that in mind as you're doing the process. If you're going to use any type of a gauge or this one where you're pulling it, Make especially sure you're parallel in addition to being in the correct spot vertically as you go through the process, okay? So enough about that, let's go ahead and, and uh, do some testing. So I'm going to flip the rifle back to uh, the normal right side up position. It is cleared, and let's go ahead and close the bolt. Now, I'm going to clear this device. I've got it turned on, it's in peak mode. I've held the delete button down to make sure, I, and I've had it on and been playing with it, otherwise it'd be cleared when you first power it on. Make sure you're showing N0, N00 for your number of pulls, and, uh, and that you're not in live mode, okay? Because uh, I don't believe this will remember your uh, reading in live mode, okay? So you can go to live mode and come back and it'll be there, but I don't think it records a peak if you're not in peak mode. So we've got it set up in peak pounds, uh, no pulls on it, so we're ready to go. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to go and use it like a conventional strain gauge because that's not actually what Wheeler recommends with this unit. Because the sensor's in the head, I'm going to try and act, use the rifle just like I, as if I were shooting it, only difference being that this sensor is placed between my finger and the trigger. So let's go ahead, I'm going to line myself up here. Uh, rifle's charged, empty, safety's off. So I'm going to get in here and just try and get as natural of a grip as I can, look at where my finger's resting. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate the head on this wheeler and I'm going to put it right where 
my center of my finger was resting. Now, I can't do quite a natural pull because I got this half inch of extra space, but I've got my wheeler in there, and let me go ahead and just pull the trigger. Okay, and uh, seven pounds, 1.3 ounces. Now, as I did this process, one thing I noticed, and uh, I'll try and show you in, in a couple minutes watching the gauge, is that my peak reading wasn't when the trigger broke. It was when it first started to move and it hit a rough spot. I got the take up on it, right, at your take up. Once I started moving, it had some grittiness. I had to get over that grittiness and that was the actual peak reading I got, not when the actual trigger broke, okay? And we'll talk about that in live mode and looking for that and maybe demonstrate that too. So anyway, my peak reading was seven pounds, 1.3 ounces. So I'm gonna press the enter button down here and my display reset to zero. I have N01 on my screen, meaning I saved that. Let's go ahead and charge the rifle and do this again. And again, we're going to do this the same methodology because that's the other thing is uh, try and be as accurate as you can, but be consistent. Otherwise, you're not going to get consistent results. So I do have this held parallel to the bore, uh, as parallel as I can this way for me holding it. And I'm just going to put my hand in here and try and be as natural as possible and do this again. So, okay, now I got six pounds, nine ounces, and I just hit the creep and six pounds 10.8 ounces was the final so we'll save that reading do it one more time and then we'll uh, then we'll try and zoom in and give you a close-up of the display as we're doing this to uh, try and give you a better idea of things to look for things that uh, I'm experienced with experiencing with this rather crude trigger Ooh. 7 pounds, 3.6 ounces, and it finally creeped on me. And when it released, it did jump up to 3.7 ounces, but basically, again, the, 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 the peak was not when the rifle would have fired. It was when overcoming that hump, getting to that point. So we'll go ahead, press enter again. I have now have three readings in there, and I have an average of 6 pounds, 15.9 ounces out of those three. If I go to min max I have a max of seven pounds 3.7 ounces and a minimum of six pounds 10.8 ounces so there you go in in reality if I was going to actually be t testing something I'd probably do a couple runs of 10 pulls you know with a, with a clean rifle and uh, I make sure everything's you know I, I clean it dry fire it a few times just to settle all the parts back in and then I would go ahead and do my trigger testing so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in here and I'm going to try and show you two things, uh, if possible. Oops, helps if I get the right uh, knob on here. We'll see if that's in the right spot. I may have to shift some stuff around. So let's go ahead and I'm going to clear this reading, or clear all these readings. And I'm going to put this in here and let's see. Pardon me for messing with the camera while filming. That's a, isn't that a cardinal no-no or something? Okay, this is not... There we go. Yeah, okay, so... Okay, so... Uh, what I'm going to do here is charge the weapon, and I'm going to do the same methodology, only I'm not going to... I'm just going to pull the trigger with my other uh, thing, and I don't know if you're going to be able to see. I'm, I'm not going to do this right, because I want you to be able to see what's going on, so you can watch the trigger and the gauge, so... Got it centered in there a little bit. Okay, now I just got over the grittiness, right? And you'll notice as I went the rest of the travel and the weapon fired, my force didn't go any higher, okay? So let's do that again uh, in case you always jump back and see it, but let's go ahead. Clear it again, and I want to repeat that. So, again, I know I'm not lined up right or the best or anything else, but we're doing this in an illustrative way. So, okay, so I'm going to keep putting it in here. And, okay, now you see the trigger just creeped, and I'm at 6 pounds, 15.4 ounces. 
and it never went any higher but the trigger moved away before the weapon fired so that tells me this trigger needs work or I'd be better off really if I was going to try and be accurate with this thing uh, getting a different trigger okay now uh, we observed it that way by the fact that the trigger moved with the display paused or it reached its peak not at the break point but before that right now what we're going to do is we're going to go to live reading to where it's not going to hold that peak and we're going to repeat the same thing just to uh, illustrate that okay so I'm going to try and do this as slow as I can with this awkward positioning Okay, just got a creep. So you can see uh, that maybe not so clearly, but you could see that my, my reading went up and then it kind of hung out for a while as things were moving, maybe even bounced a little higher than dropped down a little bit and then it finally went. Uh, and that's one of the things that your live pulls good for is that it's going to show you uh, oops yeah, I'm going to cut my head off here maybe I'll look at you underneath I got the weird angle thing going here I'm not going to readjust it just before we finish here so anyway so that that's some ins and outs of it things to pay attention to things to look for in your trigger and of course if you're out there shooting and you're trying to shoot precisely, you know if your trigger's gritty. I mean, you're going to feel take up. You're going to feel you know you're going to feel your take up. You're going to feel the action of the trigger. And if it's got bumps and grinds going along before it fires, you're already aware of that. But you can quantify that a little better using this device. So uh, there you have it, Wheeler Professional Digital Trigger Gauge. Uh, how to use it, uh, a few pointers on it, and uh, I have to say I am pretty darn impressed with this device. I mean, I really am. Uh, when I got it, I thought, well, I really didn't want a spring tension one. I thought maybe a digital one would be a little nicer, so I spent a little bit extra money. And again, I wasn't aware that you could use it by squeezing the trigger. I didn't know the sensor was just in the tip. And, uh, and gosh, that, what a world of difference that makes. So. Uh, I would say yes if you're if you plan on using this much at all. Uh, I would recommend it. I mean, you know, twenty bucks versus fifty dollars. You're going to spend you're going to spend a little bit more for it. But if you want accurate results and want something that you're going to that you're going to have some confidence in with the calibration of it and everything else, I think it'll last a long time, give you good service, and it's a pretty good value for the money. So there you have it, Wheeler Professional Digital Trigger Tester or Full Full Gauge. I hope you enjoyed this video on the Wheeler Professional Digital Trigger Gauge. If so, please like, share, and subscribe. This video took a lot of time and effort to produce, and while it's free for download for personal or educational use, please give Lincoln credit. Commercial use of this video is forbidden without my written consent. Thanks for watching.